Hi, this is Mr. W from sciencemusicvideos.com, and this video is about measuring cellular respiration with a respirometer. During cellular respiration, living things take a fuel like glucose and oxidize it to create ATP. The waste products are carbon dioxide and water. The rate of cellular respiration, how much of it happens over time, depends on the organism, its activity, and its environment. In a high school or college biology lab, with a small organism like a germinating seed, we can measure the rate of respiration with a device called a respirometer. Here's how it works. There's a glass chamber, like a test tube or a small bottle. At the opening, there's a one milliliter pipette that's been jammed through a rubber stopper. And when the rubber stopper is in place, the only opening into the system is through this hole. Our respiring organism goes in here, and then there are two layers of cotton. One is absorbent cotton. We're going to soak that with KOH, a strong base, and what that does is it chemically absorbs all the carbon dioxide that's produced by the respiring organism. And then there's a layer of non-absorbent cotton whose function is to protect our respiring organism from that strong base. You seal off the top of the pipette with food coloring, or you can immerse the entire system in water. Now there's a fixed volume of gas inside the respirometer. As your organism respires, the CO2 that it produces will be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide that's in the absorbent cotton. The organism itself will consume the oxygen molecules in the chamber as it performs cellular respiration. That will cause the gas volume in the chamber to decrease, creating suction that will draw the food coloring down the length of the pipette. And here's what we'd see using time-lapse photography if we observe the respirometer for about 20 minutes. But how do we know that it's the disappearance of oxygen that's drawing the food coloring down the length of this pipette? How do we know that it's not gravity or a change in the surrounding air pressure? We need a control. If our assumption is that a respiring organism is consuming the oxygen inside that chamber, then we need to see what would happen if there's no respiring organism. To do so, we build an identical respirometer, but instead of our respiring organism, we substitute an equal volume of something that's not respiring, like these plastic beads. To make sure that the volumes are equal, you can use a method like measuring volume by displacement of water. Now let's observe this again with a control. Notice that in the control respirometer, the level of the food coloring isn't changing, and that means that the gas volume inside the respirometer isn't changing. The only difference between these two respirometers is the presence of our respiring organism. Let's finish by talking about how you determine the rate of respiration. The entire volume of this pipette is one milliliter. So, if as we're doing our observations, we see the food coloring move from here, which is 0.8, to here, which is 0.6, in 10 minutes, then that's a difference of 0.2 milliliters in 10 minutes. And you can reduce that to 0.02 milliliters per minute. That's our rate of oxygen consumption for this many lentils at room temperature. So now that you know how a respirometer works, you can do all kinds of inquiry. Think about different variables like different types of seeds or how long it's been since they germinated or using different kinds of organisms all together. In every case, you're going to think about how to test those variables and you're going to have to design an experiment with adequate controls. I'm going to leave that to you. To learn about the cellular and molecular details of cellular respiration, please head on over to sciencemusicvideos.com where I've got tutorials written for you about glycolysis, about the link reaction, about the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. This is an area of the curriculum that I've also covered with songs. You can sing glycolysis with me at the website or at the YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing to sciencemusicvideos.com. Please, if you're part of a class that's not using sciencemusicvideos.com, talk to your teacher, encourage them to send me an email, to talk about a site license. I'll see you at the next video, and I'll see you over at sciencemusicvideos.com. Thank you.